A clogged feeding tube is problematic because it can lead to decreased nutrient delivery, a delay in medication administration, and in some cases, the need for a feeding tube replacement. Even though feeding tube clogs aren't always preventable, there are several precautions that can be taken to minimize the risk of one occurring. This video is going to highlight four reasons that feeding tubes get clogged and offer the solution for each one. The four main reasons that feeding tubes get clogged are using a narrow feeding tube, inadequate water flushes, improper medication administration, and the routine monitoring of the gastric residual volume. Before we dive into each of these, I just want to mention that the following discussion is for adult patients only. Recommendations for pediatric patients may differ and are not covered by the information in this video. Feeding tubes come in various sizes using the French catheter scale, which represents the diameter of the outside of the tube. The lower the French, the smaller the diameter and less space for materials to flow through. The higher the French, the larger the diameter and more space for materials to flow through. While a dietitian doesn't always have a say in the size of the feeding tube that's placed, it's still important to know that the lower the French, the more likely it is to clog. You typically see a lower French size, like 8 or 10 French, when a patient is receiving enteral feeds through a nasogastric tube or orogastric tube because they tend to cause less discomfort. You also see these sizes with a jejunostomy or a gastrostomy with a jejunal extension. That's because of the small diameter of the small intestine and the ease of guiding it past the pyloric sphincter. Nevertheless, a 12 French feeding tube is usually a reasonable alternative in both cases, reducing the risk of clogging without adding to the patient's discomfort. A gastrostomy allows for a wider feeding tube, with 24 French being an ideal size. For a gastrostomy with a jejunal extension, it can be a 24 French gastrostomy with a 12 French jejunal extension. Put simply, to minimize the risk of clogging, we should strive for the highest French possible without sacrificing comfort or safety. Once again, that's usually 12 French for a nasogastric tube, orogastric tube, and a jejunostomy, 24 French for a gastrostomy, and a 24 to 12 French for a gastrostomy with a jejunal extension. The second reason that feeding tubes get clogged is inadequate water flushes. Even though the tube feeding formula is a liquid, the viscosity is higher than water from the nutrient particles that are suspended in it. Those particles can accumulate as residue in the feeding tube and eventually lead to a clog themselves. The residue can also contribute to a narrowing of the tube and make it easier for particles from crushed medications to get lodged in there, get precipitated by gastric contents that come up into the tube, and serve as a medium for microbial growth. If you flush water at regular intervals throughout the day, it helps to keep the tube clear of residue and avoid these complications. The American Society for Parenteral and Enteral Nutrition recommends a minimum volume of 30 milliliters of water flushed every four hours with continuous feeding and the same amount flushed before and after every feeding session with bolus and intermittent feeding. They don't provide a recommendation for cyclic feeding, but it seems logical to maintain a similar protocol to continuous feeding while arranging for a flush to occur at the beginning and end of each cycle. Aspen also says the larger the flush volume, the more likely the tube is to remain patent. However, the amount of water used in a flush must be determined by the patient's fluid needs and restrictions. Thus, you may consider incorporating the water flushes required to meet a patient's daily fluid needs into the recommendations to prevent clogging. If you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you hit the like button, share it with a friend, and shop for more free and exclusive content by clicking the link down in the video description. The third reason that feeding tubes get clogged is improper medication administration. Within this reason, there are several common mistakes that occur. The first mistake is not grounding medication tablets to a fine powder. 
This means that small pieces of the tablet enter the feeding tube where they can get caught in the wall of it or cling to residue from the tube feeding formula. The second mistake is crushing and flushing medications with an enteric coating. An enteric coating is applied to medications to prevent disintegration in the stomach, which can ensure the medication isn't destroyed or made unabsorbable by the gastric contents, while also making sure it doesn't do any damage to the gastrointestinal mucosa. When an enteric coated tablet is crushed and flushed, it not only reduces the safety and effectiveness of the medication, but the enteric coating can clump and clog the feeding tube. The third mistake is mixing medications into the tube feeding formula before they're flushed through the feeding tube. Doing this is problematic because the medications can interact with the formula, with precipitation being one of the possible outcomes. Finally, the fourth mistake is mixing medications together before they're flushed through the feeding tube. Mixing medications increases the risk of a clog for the same reason as mixing medications and formula it can lead to precipitation. With these mistakes in mind, here are some strategies to avoid them. First, all tablets should be ground to a fine powder and dissolved in at least five milliliters of water. Second, tablets with an enteric coating should never be crushed and flushed. Third, medication should never be mixed with tube feeding formula. Fourth, Every medication should be prepared and administered separately, with at least 30 milliliters of water flushed before and after medications, and at least 5 milliliters of water flushed in between medications. And fifth, a pharmacist should review the medications list to see if it can be optimized for tube feeding. They can explore things like liquid alternatives for medications and a planning for the timing of administration. Coming to the end, the fourth reason that feeding tubes get clogged is the routine monitoring of the gastric residual volume. As I've outlined in my video on this topic, a gastric residual volume is the amount of gastric contents found in the stomach at a single point in time. The clinician connects the feeding tube to a feeding syringe with the plunger in place and pulls on the plunger to extract whatever is in the stomach. This is repeated until little to no contents are produced, and then the volume of the extracted contents is measured in milliliters. If it's determined to be a safe amount, the contents are reinserted, and the tube feeding continues. But if it's determined to be an unsafe amount, the contents are discarded, and the tube feeding is held until the gastric residual volume decreases to a level that's deemed safe to resume. A full explanation of the limitations of the monitoring of gastric residual volume is beyond the scope of the video you're watching. However, it's relevant to preventing clogs because gastric contents can interact with the tube feeding formula and result in precipitation. The American Society for Parenteral and Enteral Nutrition, the Society of Critical Care Medicine, and the American College of Gastroenterology recommend that we avoid the routine monitoring of the gastric residual volume. If the gastric residual volume is measured, the American Society for Parenteral and Enteral Nutrition recommends flushing the feeding tube with 30 milliliters of water afterward. In summary, feeding tube clogs are a common complication that are usually preventable. By avoiding the practices that contribute to clogging and embracing those that minimize the risk of it, you'll put your patients in the best position to have a clean and functioning feeding tube. The benefits of having a clean and functioning feeding tube include enhanced nutrient delivery, timely medication administration, and the avoidance of unnecessary procedures to replace it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel.